All right, we're doing 2013 question one. All right, uh, first part is pretty easy. It's just basically graph the points. Uh, as usual, this time they actually give you the x side, but let's put in the y information. Okay, it goes up to about 0.5, so figure make this 0.5 and this 0.25. Alright, and then just plugging in the plot in the data there. Let's see. Uh, somewhere in there. Uh, 75. So you'd end up getting a graph like that, and then you'd make a nice curve of best fit, basically just drawing a line through the points without actually connecting the dots. Um, this one was a pretty easy three points. Um, one point for this, that axis, one point for a smooth line of best fit, and one point for realizing that over here becomes fairly linear which kinda goes with the whole smooth curve alright starting off with BI um, the easiest way to actually determine because uh, they want to plot position as a function of time and where give it we had velocity versus time the best way to do that is take area Remember, x is the integral of v dt. So the integral of velocity with, uh, with respect to time is the position. So take the area and plot that. And you may even want to say, like, plot every, uh, let's see, the time went up by one second. You could say, like, every 0.25 seconds. Or, you know, what, 0.2 seconds. You know, you do it for the first, you do it from here to here, then you do it from here to here, here to here, here to here, every two seconds. All right. And then I22, two, two, oh, yeah, this was one point for basically stating that correctly. Um, and then they want to say... Uh, sketch the position x as a function of time for the glider. Alright, so if you remember, the graph looks like this. It's curved, and then it kind of goes linear. So, in this section, the, gra the position graph should look... Um, all right, sorry. Um, it's curved and then constant. So here, the position should look linear. And then over here, it should look curved. And the curve should start off big, um, but yeah, yeah, so it should end up curving. And I believe this happens all at one second. So in the first second, it should look like a curve, like a, your typical curve, like that. Let me just smooth that. All right, and then from there, it should be a straight line up. And, of course, this should be connected. All right, this was worth three points. So one point for realizing that there's a curve in this section. They actually say between 0.79, that that's actually where your curve should have ended. You got one point for realizing that it's a straight line here beginning somewhere between this range and then you also got one point for a smooth transition that means is you didn't have a case where it curves like this and then 
goes like that. You know, that's not smooth. This is a fairly smooth transition. You know, it almost looks like one, like one um, big curve, but looking at it closely, you realize that it's actually two. It's a, well, it's a curve and then a straight line from the top. All right. All right, for part C, it's saying <clears throat> it wants us to figure out the time it takes for the glider to make contact with the bumper to the far right. So uh, there's a few ways to go about doing this. You could actually do that whole uh, area under the curve of the velocity graph to figure it out, um, you know, how far it travels in the time when it's uh, accelerating from the spring and when it's not. Uh, it actually is uh, important to realize that there's two motions. There's the um, accelerating when it's connected to the string, uh, spring. And then there's the constant speed. Now, we actually know exactly when it stops accelerating. It stops accelerating after equals 0 0.79 seconds. We know that from the actual question. Alright, so let's see. How far uh, does it travel at, after that? Um, well, if we look at this, let's see. It was, oh, the spring was compressed 0.25 meters. Again, given from the actual problem. So that means uh, after this point, we know that it travels at pretty much a constant speed of 0.5 meters per second. And we know it has to finish off the rest of the um, 1.75 meters. You know, because this whole distance is 2 meters. So, um, V equals D over T. Remember, you can use this equation only if you're talking about average velocity or constant speed velocity. So, 0.5 equals 1.75 divided by t. t equals um, 3.5. So, that means that the total time is... Uh, 4.295. Oh, wait, no, that, sorry, that was a seconds. That. Yeah. 4.29 seconds. All right. This was worth three points. One point for adding the times. One point for realizing these two pieces of given information, and one point for figure using this information to figure out the time it took, uh, the ending time. All right, now for part D, it says calculate the force constant of the spring. All right, so. The easiest thing to do here, so you can't do, you wouldn't be able to do F equals MA, uh, F and then, and KX equals MA, because of the fact that this is um, a changing force. As it's constantly getting uh, uncompressed, the, the magnitude of the force is changing. So, what we want to do instead is we want to use energy for part D. All right. You want to do spring equals kinetic because we know what the final speed has to end up being. We know how much it was compressed. So one half kx squared equals one half mv squared. Half drop out. K equals mv squared over x squared. I'm actually going to just rewrite this as mv over x squared. Alright, so the mass is 0.4, speed is 0.5, and the compression is 0.25. Oh, 
that was definitely the right choice. 0.4 times, the, well that's 2, 2 squared is 4, so this ends up being 0, uh, whoop. One point six means per meter, and this was a good two points. One point for doing conservation of energy, and one point for getting the correct answer with the units. All right, so they're changing things up with this one. They're saying that uh, now we're having the glider connected to the spring, which means that it's going to remain on it. Now, it says determine the amplitude of the resulting motion. So, well that, that's probably the easiest AP problem that you could ever ask for. It gets compressed by 0.25 meters, so the amplitude is going to be 0.25 meters. Easy peasy, and one point for that. Remember, not everything requires calculation. All right, now for the second part, I want to know what's the period of the oscillation. All right, well, if you remember, for a spring, it's 2 pi rad m over k, 2 pi mass is 0.4. We got this as 1.6. So that should be 2 pi rad over 1 fourth. So I'm going to say um, 6 pi. It's about pi ish. Um, or the period should be about 3.14 seconds. Um, and that's about it. Uh, and this was two points. One point for properly submitting in and one point for this equation. Now I'm actually looking at the guidelines and they said that there was an alternate way for doing this part. It says that from the point where the spring goes from you know back at this original problem when it goes from amplitude to equilibrium, it takes 0 0.79 seconds. So to go from here to here is this amount of time. Well, if we just extrapolate that, and it sh and we should uh, you should remember that this should be symmetric. So if it takes 0 0.79 seconds to go from one amplitude to the equilibrium, then it takes that amount of time to go from the equilibrium to the other amplitude. And then that same amount of time to go from that amplitude back to the equilibrium, and then back to the original amplitude. So, the total period should end up being four times this 0.79 seconds. Which will still get you, which would actually get you 3.2 seconds, but not nothing uh, that far off. Alright, again, practice these questions. If you have any problems, let me know as soon as possible.